So here we are at the end of a massive year. I have been absolutely exhausted. I haven't put up anything for about a week. Just been so tired after just putting in such long hours. So tired. But I thought, get the shirt on. Got a, had time to get a haircut finally and we'd go through and recap what an epic year it's been. And we started off this year with a top 15 anti-vegan arguments video, and this video took so long to do, like, I mean, months. Me and my mate Dan, epic editor, we, we put all these uh, arguments together to make an important resource for you, so if you haven't seen that, you should go back and check it out and share it and use it, and, you know, all these arguments are being answered in interview form, so that took us a long time to do and released it for January, but during the end of December and the start of January, I was still going through some, I had some really bad depression and um, I don't talk about it much, but I did get into a bit of a depression hole and I didn't really know how to get out of it. And that sort of inspired me to want to leave the UK and go back home to my family. I mean, COVID, I mean, it put us all in lockdown and I don't know if it was a collective thing to do with COVID, the weather, you know, overworking myself, going through some stuff personally, and I was just in this really bad depression spiral. But I didn't have time to be depressed. Obviously, I had some big projects I had to work on. And uh, before February, I had to do some filming for a big project I've been working on that I can tell you more about later. But what happened is I've been focusing on this other project so much that I forgot about February. And February is a month where all the farmers come out and campaign for dairy. So I thought, why not make a documentary exposing the dairy industry. Now, we didn't have much time, but what we did have is a lot of research we'd compiled on the dairy industry. So all I had to do really is get that research formulated into a script, okay, and then get some editors together. I've got my mate Chris Hines and Rob Howhead, who did the animations last minute. Tarion come up with a name and she's helping me in the background doing all the research, compiling it together. We're getting all these clips together and Chris Hines is like trying to piece these together and make this epic, turned out to be an epic documentary that we rushed through in about, I think it was like between seven and 10 days. And I actually took an, took all the segments out and shared it across uh, social media over the month. And we made informational artworks and just, just exposing the dairy industry for the entire month of, of February. The documentary has actually done really good on YouTube considering it's uh, been restricted to 18 and over because of its the graphic nature of the dairy industry. Amazing, so that was February, done, dusted really successful and super happy with that documentary. If you haven't seen it, go check it out and share it around because it's got some really good information in there and it's super, super, super powerful. So following February, I, we'd been organizing to go back to Australia and you know, it's a bit difficult during COVID, had to do some a lot of paperwork and then go into quarantine. I hadn't seen my family in a long time and I just needed to go back home, see my family and you know, get back, regenerate, get some sunshine. After being released from quarantine after two weeks in Sydney, try to find an Australian little team to work with to go on a tour to expose the fishing industry in the wake of an amazing documentary called Seaspiracy. I'm sure you're all familiar with that one by now. But uh, got a team, Ben and Josh, if you're watching Ben and Josh, thank you so much. Two epic legends and they come with me on a filming journey, you know, up the coast of Sydney and Queensland, and it was hectic. I'm talking, these were big filming days. I actually took a van, and I was driving my my, um, my bro's uh, van. It was like, thanks my, to my brother for letting me borrow that van. Had a little fridge in there, had a cooker in there, had a bed in there. We're driving up the coast and uh, going to expose the fishing industry in, in various ways, and actually generated some media, a couple of uh, articles from the Daily Mail. Daily Mail actually brought out some objective articles. I was actually quite impressed with the journalism there. They were just really objective and, you know, because so, I obviously don't have much hope in the Daily Mail, but this one, this journalist was really good. Bit of uh, media there, we've got some big controversy, got a lot of uh, reach and a lot of uh, views across social media, which is what my advocacy is. It's magnifying the reach on social media and, uh, you know, that was a success and it ran for a few months, um, you know, pro sea animal rights campaign. So I just felt like, the, you know, the fish do get forgotten and I'm so glad Seaspiracy was there for us. It was like this catalyst to create this little movement for fish because they are sentient conscious beings who feel pain and desire to live just like pigs and cows and dogs and other land animals. So really get behind the sea animal campaigning when you can. So during this time of releasing these sea campaign videos, I set up another campaign to go to Melbourne and do a bunch of other things. But what happened is COVID hit while I was driving there, so I had to turn back, which was crazy because they locked down all the borders while I was on the way there. So on the way back, driving past these big sheep fields, and then we seen this sheep laid over on the field. 
and she had a little baby lamb with her. So crazy, because we're out in the middle of nowhere. There was no housing around, it was just all farmland. And uh, we were in a super uh, difficult position, but I called some experts and had to decide to rescue the lamb. And we took the lamb to Freedom Hill Animal Sanctuary and you know, Kim called the lamb Joey and I was going to cry. So that was a, a bit of a highlight, but it was bittersweet because all we could do for the mother is call the animal protection people and get them down there to try to help this sheep. And there were other sheep that were injured in that field and had died in that field. So that farmer, animal abuser and really not good. So that was a bit of a bittersweet moment to this year. So what I ended up having to do is film these stunts uh, back in Adelaide, South Australia. Um, so filmed a couple of stunts in the human meat stunt and then I also did the reverse psychology stunt in South Australia as well, which I think were quite successful where the reverse psychology one particularly because you know, I was going out there pretending to support gas chambers and, and people were just coming at me like vegan activists, like, what do you mean support gas chambers? How about I throw you in a gas chamber? It was, so it was a really cool way of getting people to defend animals, you know, without them going, oh, great, here's a vegan telling me what to do. Like, they were doing it themselves. So, uh, but back to England, okay, back to England now. Had a bunch of other stuff to do. I remember I'm working on this big uh, project in the background too that you'll find out more about soon. And I had to do my speech at the vegan camp out. It was a really positive speech, one of the, my highlight speeches of my career really there was a lot of people there and I talked about my life story opened up and it was uh, just really positive and got a really good response from the audience and uh, yeah it was just a, a highlight but but during that time doing this speech I'd commenced filming for the Uncovered series so I was filming in farms in the background so while I was in Australia actually I got these places prepared and I got some investigators to prepare these places and look for places for me to go to. And so there was a lot of work being done in the background and uh, if you, anyone's watching who was working in the background, thank you so much. Uh, so I was filming in these farms and doing late nights, doing back-to-back -back farms and then had to go do the speech at the camp out and then from the camp out, go back out and do more farms. And then I had to kick off that campaign. So basically take all that footage, get it to the editors, work out a way of um, presenting this. The first episode did really well, super stoked with it um, and it was highlighting a part of the chicken industry that not many people think about which is the parent breeder sheds where the little baby chicks that people eat come from and uh first episode did really good second episode not so much and then i started to see it's really difficult to consistently upload content from inside farms um there's a few things working against you one a lot of people might not want to engage with that type of footage they might not want to keep watching two social media do have ai technology that detect maybe some cruelty or what I'm saying as being graphic and uh, people will report the videos so then they will get censored like that. What ended up happening is I found that all of my platform's engagement went completely down and then I'd just be uploading outreach and all of those videos were doing a lot worse too. So I don't regret doing the other Uncovered campaign but it did put a lot of pressure on my platforms because you can't just go, okay, I'm just gonna upload all of this graphic violence and it not, and it not have some type of effect on your reach generally. So yeah, I saw a, a huge drop in my reach across my platforms. And if I don't have reach on social media, I can't reach people with the message. So it was affecting my mental health a lot too, because I was like putting on all this work, not getting much response, but it did start to pick up. I started to be a little bit more strategic with it. In one of the months, my Facebook reached 10 million people, which was decent, you know, for my platform. So my Facebook also kicked over to 200,000 followers this year. Instagram hasn't moved, but we still managed to break through uh, this weird little censorship thing and get some big videos on Instagram, which I'm really happy about. Looking back, like even though I did have a, a bit of a dip, it did pick up and it all evened out in the end. But one of the cool things that happened with the Uncovered series is uh, R24, which is a, I think it's an Israeli news network, but it's a worldwide news network. They uh, played about a minute's worth of the footage from the parent breeder sheds on live TV and had me on to talk about World Vegan Day, which was my vegan anniversary, eight year vegan anniversary. And what better way to spend your eight year vegan anniversary than talking to I24 with some investigation footage that you've gathered. So that was pretty cool highlight of the year and uh, super stoked that I24 gave me the opportunity and they showed their audience the truth without even censoring it. So that was good. Also kicked off a cooking series with my man Derek Sarno. Thank you so much, Derek, for getting involved with that. We've got a couple more episodes to go, so you can check that out as well. And, and another big milestone that happened this year is I kicked over the 20,000 Challenge 22 signups from my personal link. 
So that was cool too. So 20,000 signups is a decent milestone. Considering that's not the only metric that I have to measure my effectiveness. I mean, you have to measure things like viewership and reach and also how, how strong the message is. So if I'm reaching you know, millions of people not everyone's gonna sign up to Challenge 22, like small percentage of them do. Most people just get seeds planted, they get stepped onto their journey, and they make changes by themselves. They might be eating less meat, go vegetarian, they might go full vegan, they might turn into vegan activists who turn thousands of people vegan. So Challenge 22 is only one, one metric I use, and 20,000 signups is, is decent considering getting people over the line to sign up and then do this challenge and complete this challenge. Um, but if you wanna do Challenge 22, sign up down below. Veganuary is also another good one. Uh, January's coming up tomorrow. <laughs> you can't really measure your effect. It's just impossible to measure that butterfly effect, the domino effect, the ripple effect, but uh, you can have some metrics that give you a bit of an idea. So thank you, Challenge 22, and whoever signed up to Challenge 22 because of seeing my videos, you're epic, and I uh, hope you stay vegan for life. So then when Christmas was coming up, I uh, obviously campaigned harder at Christmas time, and this is when I really started to knuckle down. I started to get a couple of videographers here in the UK. Uh, me and Tarion started working overtime, working massive hours, started really pumping it, and I mean like working crazy hours. And editors in Australia, editors here, trying, and I was editing as well a lot. So I did a bunch of debates, handing out Christmas turkeys, we went to Tesco, handed out big shopping um, haul to all the meat eaters out the front of Tesco. Uh, Tarion did her little Christmas starter pack, which was like a Christmas guide to help people find all the vegan stuff at Christmas. So basically, I was going to go buy a bunch of the Wicked Kitchen No Turkey Roast. So I called Derek and he's like, you know what, I'll donate them for the animals. Had some amazing conversations and gave people, you know, a little something to cook up at Christmas time instead of the turkeys. Even did a little sneaky uh, support your local turkey farmer reverse psychology little video there too. But one of the highlights of the Christmas campaigning was that earlier in December, I went to a vigil with Derbyshire Animal Save and we went to a massive turkey slaughterhouse where they have the gas chambers there and they kill three million turkeys there a year. And uh, I was talking to the staff there about the welfare on their site and one of the security guards said, oh, the welfare here is the best I've ever seen. The slaughterhouse manager was like, you know, we only slaughter at Red Tractor here, like that's something to be proud of or something. But what ended up happening is during Christmas, I was looking around for turkey farms. Um, me and some investigators were looking around for some turkey farms. I went to four turkey farms that either could not gain access to or were empty for Christmas because this was like, a few days before Christmas I started doing this because I was so busy. But it turned out that one of the farms, the fifth farm actually that we tried, um, still had turkeys in there and went in there and it was some of the most horrible scenes I've seen. The most filthiest place, disgusting cruelty happening in there. Just negligence and neglect and, you know, suffering in this turkey farm. And this place was an Avara farm. There was an Avara food sign there and made a big expose video and everyone got behind it, which I'm super happy for. It was one of the best performing videos of the year. So thank you so much to everyone who got behind that video and shared it. You can still share it now because turkeys are eaten all year round in the UK, but it was just a bizarre coincidence that I was at Avara and four of these farms I tried to get into, they all failed, but the last one happened to be an Avara farm and it was just horrible. Red Tractor approved as well. So, but after that, just completely exhausted, so tired slept oh my god i was sleeping 10 11 hours a day because it's just doing like one of the one of the days what did a 24 hour day just uh, dry, uh working from the morning then driving at night going into the farm coming back didn't get back till 9 30 a.m uh, go to sleep wake up start editing i didn't have my editors to edit that video so I, I had to do all the editing which is fine i've been editing for years anyway i like editing but it was just uh coupled with all the other work i do i think i edited for it was over 20 20 hours i was doing editing for and uh, you know, on Christmas day, getting the last edit up for the IGTV just before going out to have Christmas dinner, <laughs> you know, vegan Christmas dinner, but just a lot of work. So completely exhausted, shattered. This is the first time in front of the camera since. What a year, what a year. I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's helped me this year, to Tarion, to um, the investigators, to my editing team, videographers, to basically anyone who's worked with me, researchers, administrators. Been working on another massive project this year too, and early next year hoping to release it. So we'll let you know more about that. But this here has been two years in the making. It's big, very big, and I can't talk to you about it right now, but you'll know soon enough, and I'm very excited for that to be released too. So a lot of work 
still to do. Thank you to everyone who supported me, donors, followers, subscribers, anyone who's commented, shared my stuff. Eternally grateful for your support. Online now since 2015, all I ever wanted to do was to, to inspire people to change and to help the animals. It's been amazing that I've gotten this far considering where I come from, you know, lived a life of crime and drugs and gangs and went to prison and come out and uh, wanted to change my life and do something with my sobriety and my life that was positive and I chose the animals to help and that's why I've dedicated my life to this and a lot of my friends are in prison or still on drugs or you know they chose different lives and um, I'm just grateful I have this opportunity to make a difference and you know you guys have been with me for the journey and I'm grateful for that so thank you and uh, here's to 2022 we won't be given up we won't be given up the name of this video is probably something like is this the end or is it time to hang it up or is it time to quit? But no, there won't be no quitting. There will be only progressing, trying to push the boundaries even further because I've still got a lot left in me. It's a tough journey, but you've got to go through those ups and those downs and just keep going. All the activists out there, all the vegans out there, you know, don't give up. Anyone who's thinking of going vegan, sign up to Veganuary or to Challenge 22. You won't regret it. Vegans only regret is uh, not doing it sooner. So please, the animals need you to stop eating dead bodies. Stop paying for this horrible, egregious violence and cruelty. Leave the dark side, come over to the vegan side and uh, you know live on the side of justice and fairness for animals. I'll see you all in the new year with some new campaigns, with some new videos, with some new work for the animals. And I really hope you all have a happy new year. So let's set an intention for the new year to make an even bigger impact for the animals than we did in any year before this.